intent of the language is always to make sure there's no conflict of interest for a fair and unbiased preparation of the EIS. And so instead of acknowledging one interest or another, be it the applicant's interest or the county's interest or the public's interest, we have some additional language that we have had buy-off from CH2M Hill as well as the agencies that the executive will be signing to update that section of the contract. It initially indicated that um, if any time prior to commitments of or during the thank you or during the term of this agreement, consultant or any of its employees involved in the performance of this agreement shall have or develop an interest in the subject matter of this agreement that is potentially in conflict with the applicant's interest. Um, we are going to strike the applicant's interest. We've had public comment that said you should put public interest in there. And um, there's also discussions, the original draft said county's interest. Um, when we added the lower sections in the draft of the contract, referring to a document that was turned in, um, the, the county, based off of prosecuting attorney's opinions, changed it to the applicant's interest. After review of the public comments submitted, it was determined that, just to clarify the, the, the whole situation of what the conflict of interest is, um, we strike conflict, applicant's interest and included the agency's interest in developing an EIS that is unbiased, fair, and impartial. The last change to that section um, is a change in regards to future contracts associated with CH2M Hill. Um, this is a change that was proposed by CH2M Hill to ensure that there will be no future contracts with CH to the um, Pacific International Terminals or Burlington Northern and specifically to the project preparation and development of this action. So I think with these additional clarifications that we've had all agencies agree upon, as well as the applicant agree upon, it really clarifies the intent of what that conflict of interest language is there to do. So they could, well, you're looking at the last track changes here, so um, CH2M Hill could engage in a future contract with either PIT or BNSF in other projects, just nothing relating to this proposed project. Correct. Okay. Mr. Warner. Yeah, that, that was kind of my question too, because it seems like it actually narrows the conflict of interest. Because on their actually conflict of interest form, Exhibit D, it says has no current or pending contracts with the entities listed. That's current or pending. Right. And but, so but now we've narrowed it, no current or pending contracts regarding the facility at Cherry Point. So they could have a huge multi-million dollar contract with those people somewhere else. At the same time. So, so the um, I, I think I understand where your comments coming from. Section three point one three of the RFP required those disclosures to be turned in. Those disclosures were in regard to current or pending contracts with those companies. The intent of the language and the change was to also indicate that CH two and Hill will not have future contracts on the development of this action. So um, with the preparation of the RFP and the submittals, it was determined at CH, based off the information that they turned in, as well as all the sub-consultants information that was turned in, doesn't have a conflict of interest. And so I don't believe that that is narrowing the focus on it. I believe that that's saying there will be no future contracts, as well as with the selection of CH2M Hill, we require them to disclose any contracts that they have. But let me make sure, because this language now, the way I read it, mm -hmm. they could have another contract with SSA or, or the PIT or the railroads in Oregon or Idaho, because um, this narrows it just to the proposed project. So we don't care if they're working on the proponent's side on another project next door? I, I think there would be discussion in regards to that if, if that was a true statement that the, that the company had contractual relationships. Today, we know that they don't. And they've acknowledged to agree that in the future, they will not have contractual relationships with PIT or BNSF on the action. 
And the scope of work document was prepared for budgeting purposes to have a acknowledgement of what CH2 on Hill is required to accomplish um, to meet the contract terms, as well as to provide the amount of money associated with it. And the scope of work was developed with um, the agencies as well as CH2 on Hill. The scope of work may change as we move forward and as the agencies and with um, consulting with CH2 on Hill decide that additional information is required to make sure it is open and transparent and to make sure the intent of the CEPA and NEPA regulations are met. Tyler, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if, if we do change the scope of work, does that come back to us to approve? It would not. Would be a, it would be a change to a contract. We see changes to scope of work all the time. I think that's a good question, and it's in turn it that you guys are, are, are reviewing and approving the contract associated with it. And the scope of work document is an administrative function that will be determined on how the EMS preparation is for. Um, so there were a couple of questions that came up associated with the scope of work, and I just want to brief on them touch um, 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 briefly. There was a discussion about the 60 to 120 days of scoping comments. Where, where is that? It's page 54 says so scoping period June and July, so that would be oh, two months. So, okay. so, so I, in the um, first section of the scope of work, as, as Council Member Weimer is indicating, is page 54. And this kind of hits on another comment that's been submitted. There was an overview of phase one for tasks and schedules associated with it. The intent of that language was to show the actions that will be happening as we move forward and the anticipated time frames between it, each action. There are some dates associated with that, and as you can tell, they're a little outdated. So the important part of that information is the time frames from when the contract signed as we move forward associated with it. So um, the public agency and scoping period is June through July, and as well, um, Council Member Crawford, we had a public meeting associated with the pre-scoping meeting where 800 um, individuals showed up to participate in, and in that, the agencies had indicated that it's likely a 60-day time period will be for scoping. But people, I'm not sure how people are really hung up on this 120-day thing, but I, I guess, let me feed back to what I think I hear, is that the time period starts when this is some, when we approve this and then the executive signs it, that's when the clock starts. But uh, that's kind of interesting because I really don't see anything that really sets that as yeah. 60 days. Let me just, does that count weekends, you know, all that stuff. Let me have one point of clarification on that. Um, what starts when the contract is signed is CH2 and Hill starts working. There's a lot of action that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks, four to six weeks, before um, this, this, this chart is, is that scoping would start. Once scoping starts, which in this chart is four to six weeks from the contract being signed, that is anticipated to be a 60-day time frame of scoping specifically. I, 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 it was my understanding that that was in here. It's probably the acknowledgement of June to July as well as the public involvement that we've had initially in the pre-scoping meetings, that the, the indication of 60 days was there. The agencies have been discussing the 60 days for scoping, and the comment is duly noted that there is uh, a, a, a public, the, 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 the public is looking for additional time frames associated with that. So I know that the agencies will be discussing that. And that decision would come out in either the public participation plan or the specific scoping notice that's sent out in four to six weeks from, from when the contracts get signed. I think, so we're, we're not really saying how long that period is going to be. We're just saying there's a general guideline here. And, and, um, and there's been agency discussion of 60 days. Uh -huh. and associated with the information on the contract and the scope of work. There's been additional public comment that have asked for 120. And so when that decision comes in front of the agencies, we'll review that and, and see if 120 days is appropriate. I, you know, I think a lot of it is trying to provide initial 
upfront information on what the scoping process is set up to do, and you can accomplish that within the 60 days. That's above and beyond the uh, minimum requirement. And, and so, but the agencies will be reviewing that and making the decision when it comes to time. Ms. Brenner and then Mr. Craig. Um, I'm not trying to sound really uh, obstinate here, but council members, and I know I'm not the only one, have been blasted because of so many things. And I think it would behoove the administration to put these kinds of bits of language in there because, I mean, you, you say you'll consider it, but then it's out of our hands by the time you consider it. And I just feel like these are small things. I don't, I don't think, I don't see any reason not to put 120 days in there or for, you know, June through uh, September. And that's, you know, that's kind of a lot of these little tweaks have to do with the misimpression that this is all about us. And we're taking the heat on it anyway, so I feel like we deserve to have our issues addressed today. Mr. Crown. Thank you. With the enormity and the magnitude of this project, I think, and I have to concur with Councilmember Brenner, it, it, it defies logic and, and probably common sense to in any way appear to accelerate or uh, move through the system a, a, a project or a process that has probably garnered more attention from the, the greater Whatcom County community than any other single project in my tenure and actually anything since I've lived here over a third of a century. And I think it would be in everyone's best interests and makes nothing but but a common sense to to have a longer than normal uh, process and I think the 120 day uh, suggestion or request is a reasonable one given the you know the magnitude of this project the emotional aspects of this project and the potential ramifications of this project. Uh, whether they're positive or negative. Uh, and so I, I would highly suggest that the 120 days be selected by not just Baltimore County, but by your, your colleagues at the Department of Ecology and the Army Corps of Engineers. Comment noted, and I can assure you that um, the Army Corps and Ecology have been getting the comments associated with it, and, and we'll be hearing um, the, your, the voice that, that you're indicating. That what the administration will do, and in, 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 in my involvement, PBS's involvement, will try to um, educate and, 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 and start to put out information associated with how to most be um, effective in the scoping comment period. Uh, the 60 days is well over what um, is, is, is required, and, and it was a determination from the agencies that the 60 days is, the, is, is a good limit of time to provide for scoping periods, uh, but we will look at that as we move forward and try to provide additional information to the public uh, on how best to comment within a scope. Thank you. Because I'm just looking at the clock, we have a, yet another uh, Gateway Pacific issue on our agenda, and then just a bunch of regular business to attend to that all these fine people are here waiting to participate in. So I would uh, again like the council to approve and inform the dollar um, 
dollar expenditure of the 961000 that uh, has to form this evening with the changes to the conflict of interest language. I think Tyler's done a, a very good job this morning of explaining where we're at with it and the flexibility that we have working with the partner agencies moving forward on this. Um, I do also do know that the, uh, your comments concerning the extending the time um, and I will do what I can to uh, encourage our staff and the other agencies to agree to that. It's part of the process that uh, they're in control of again, uh, trying to bring a body of work together for you down the road. Uh, and I am also very appreciative of the community's comments on this. We, we brought this forward so that we could actually have this discussion this morning. We're going to, we already spent hours on it uh, in, in, in over the next months and the next year. So I, I would uh, ask the council to, uh, to move that forward for approval. Uh, we will note uh, all of your comments on it and I assure the community and the council that we'll do everything that we can so we have a fair and open process giving everybody adequate time uh, to, uh, to comment on it. We have an obligation to the to the landowner out there to get this process done. Uh, this contract, uh, according to our attorneys, uh, PDS staff, um, the Corps uh, and Department of Ecology feels that this creates a good roadmap for us moving forward. And I think that uh, I'm putting my trust in, um, in the fine folks that we have working on this, uh, that, they're doing, uh, that they're doing a good job of it. The money is going to be passed through Flex, the, the schedule is flexible and is going to be determined as we go to, to allow the community and everybody the opportunity to, to weigh into it, and I would encourage the council to, uh, to approve it. Okay, so I, I guess more specifically though, well, I'll wait until we have a motion or something. I think that's why Sam's raising his hand. So, Mr. Crawford? Hey, let me refer you out. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'll move uh, approval or recommendation of approval of the full council tonight of this contract with the changes as submitted by Tyler. So, uh, Mr. Crawford has moved that the committee recommend approval of the contract as submitted with the track changes version as presented by staff. Any discussion on that, Mr. Weimer? Well, I appreciate what the executive just say, said, and I, but I, I'm having a hard time understanding why we're supposed to put blinders on and just look at the contract for the $900,000 without the scope that goes with it, because every other contract we look at, whether it's buying a dump truck or anything else, the scope of work is really what defines what we're getting for our money. And I've got a number of questions on the scope of work, so I cannot support this until we answer the questions of the scope of work. The scope of work talks about opening up a public docket system by a web mail. Well, that says 30 days, and I don't care if we end up with 60 or 120 days, why are we only accepting electronic comments for a shorter period. The scope of work talks about Washington State. This project is bigger than Washington State. Why are we limiting the scope of work to Washington State? There's a whole bunch of issues within the scope of work that I would really like to have the discussions about, but it sounds like we're not supposed to talk about that. So I, I can't support this contract the way it's come to coming to us at this point. I also cannot support this contract as long as the previous contracts do not include indirect costs. I have some problems with the project, uh, uh, the, the contract too, not uh, the indirect cost things uh, I'm okay with and the, the scope of work, it, it is kind of troubling, we're supposed to close our eyes and all that as Mr. Weimer said, but just, just in the changes on the conflict of interest, I don't think I'd be being very responsible if uh, we didn't see this, see some revised language here that didn't, that, that really clarified what what we're talking about, and um, as far as this conflict of interest, it seems like there are some opportunities here. I'm not saying it would happen, not saying anyone's going to go do something illegal, but we have to be so careful. You know we're going to, you know we're going to get challenged on every inch of this, every step of the way, which is why I think the transparency is so important. If we hear so much from everyone and everything when they don't like what we do that the process was flawed. And uh, that's always frustrating for me, so I'd like to make sure we get the process right up front. So these details, I think, are important, and um, as presented, I can't recommend approval either. So 
I hate to say that too because I would like to, but um, is there any other comments? If not, then all those in favor of supporting Mr. Crawford's motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. That fails. One to two. Any other motions? Would you like to send it to the council with no recommendation? Would you like to hold it in committee? Anyone? Anyone? Well, yeah, no no action needs to be taken for the council to take this up tonight. So. Right, okay, so so we don't need to even move to recommend and move forward with no recommendation. Okay. Okay, then that fails and uh, we don't make any recommendation as of now unless there's another motion. There is an agenda item for this. Yeah, there is an agenda item on it later tonight. So I'm sure we'll get to talk about it again. I look forward to seeing you all back. Uh, moving on to our consent agenda, item number one, review and approval of a memorandum of agreement, an amended MOA regarding the preparation of the vessel traffic study as required by the Gateway Pacific Terminal Settlement Agreement. I'll move approval. Yeah. I do have a question on that. That's been moved to recommend approval. There is a question. Maybe this is for Tyler, as long as you're still here on this uh, traffic or vessel traffic study. Yes. What, how did the parties that are signing up on this? I, you know, I saw things like League of Women Voters. What have they got to do with this? So, I mean, uh, not that I want. They were part of the original. They were part of the original settlement agreement and the appeal associated with it. Oh, in the 90s? So in the 90s, there was a permit approval. Oh. There was a settlement in that settlement agreement. There was a requirement for a vessel traffic study. From that point until today, it's been determined that the consultant to prepare that vessel traffic study is no longer available or, or around. And so this is an easy change from that consultant to another consultant that all of the parties associated with the settlement agreement have already agreed. It's in front of the council today because the council was an original signatory of that agreement back in the Mr. Lyman. I think I'm fine with it since I see that they all agreed. I was just wondering why uh, Dr. Harold and the Captain Townley aren't available anymore. I, you know, I don't know that answer is associated with their availability. All right. So it's, do, do we even, did someone move to recommend? Yeah. Okay, so all those in favor of recommending approval signify by saying aye. 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 That passes 3-0.